Hi, I'm Jason Luger. I'm an urban geographer and city planner and faculty in the UC Berkeley Department of City and Regional Planning in the College of Environmental Design. Welcome to the fourth course in this five course series, Introduction to City Planning. This is Planning in the Postmodern Age, 1980 to today. We begin this course in 1980, shortly after the election of Margaret Thatcher in Britain and Ronald Reagan in the United States. The Cold War is still going, but waning. Both the Soviet Union and China are beginning slowly to open to global capital. Many industrial cities have declined, leaving vast spaces of disinvestment and abandonment. At the same time, changes in the economy have given birth to a new professional class, which begins moving back into declining cities, seeking authentic urban spaces and experiences. Financial cities reshape themselves into glittering emerald cities. Industry spreads to new areas, and great new industrial cities rise in the global south. Recent reports have shown that humans are influencing the climate, and there is a push toward greener alternatives. The state begins a long and protracted decline around the world, as urban planning is increasingly pushed into the private sector and toward economic rather than larger structural and physical aims and policies. Many cities that have declined for decades begin to regrow, albeit in different ways. The internet is born, which will produce an urban transformation as dramatic as the first industrial revolution 200 years prior. The new economy, post-industry, produces a new set of winners and losers and planners are tasked with vast new challenges amidst these changes and transformations. Students in this course will understand the evolution of contemporary planning by comparing previous movements and the origins of modern design, social reform, policies, and politics. We'll identify key global shifts in the cultural, economic, political, and industrial relationships and hierarchies between and across different cities. We'll recognize how city planning as a discipline emerged from the ideas of writers, politicians, architects, designers, and social reformers. Compare and contrast the ways that technology and innovations change cities and the way planners must plan for cities, from the aqueduct to the railroad and the automobile. We'll critically evaluate how historical planning movements were successful and in what ways we still borrow for them, but also how they failed and how and why some cities rose and fell over time and why that's relevant for cities today. And finally, recognize and assess the relationships between planning, the economy, politics, and society, the way that the Industrial Revolution gave rise to revolutions and transformative social movements and make links to the contemporary urban world. This course looks at planning from 1980 to the present day, a time in which postmodernism has replaced modernism and with it new ideas on how to approach cities. The environmental movement gained steam as awareness grew of humans' imprint on the natural world and the dawn of the urban Anthropocene, an era where humans and cities influenced the environment. There was also a massive shift away from many of the ideas of modernism, which we covered in the last course, including the role of the state and the public sector in planning. The age of austerity would see a new approach toward making cities and urban sites of investment and public-private partnerships, rather than the large housing and infrastructure projects that were largely state-led in the post-World War II era. Cities would increasingly reshape around the flows of modern capital in what has been called the postmodern or post-industrial age, especially in the global north. This meant urban spaces for finance, tourism, and services. Meanwhile, gentrification would become a new topic within planning as cities that had declined saw new life as urban professionals returned, yet structural problems remained. In postmodern planning, older movements were brought back. New urbanism returned planning to the village scale, incorporating aspects of previous movements such as garden cities and city beautiful. Meanwhile, in the Global South, massive cities pulsed and grew, overtaking many of the previously dominant cities and offering alternative pathways and visions of the future. And in terms of the future, information technology and the rise of the network society once again have fundamentally reshaped cities and urban planning around smart city ideas 
and the integration of technology into urban fabric and daily life. This has been innovative and has made city life easier and more efficient, but also raises questions about privacy, surveillance, and which urban aspects might become obsolete in the age of robotics, automation, and artificial intelligence. In the neoliberal age, cities compete harder than ever, sometimes for the same type of investment, and economic development in some ways replaced planning as a dominant field. At the same time, reactions against urban austerity and a shift toward privatization have resulted in radical shifts post-2008, as activism has once again found itself central to urban planning, and the community has again emerged as a crucial scale for decisions.